Wonderful. Okay, so we'll zoom into today's topic. So we are dealing with wills, probate, and testaments. Um, actually, um, before you just educate us on that, why don't people make wills? As important as this, this topic is, mm. why don't people make wills? Hmm. Okay. Now, uh, it, it, I mean, for some people, I think it would be cultural. There'd be mm -hmm. cultural reasons. And I'll give you an example. I, I had a colleague one time call me. Uh, he, he's Caucasian. He had an African client, a single parent with one child. Mm -hmm. She had contacted him to draft a will on her behalf. And then he got to the point where he had to ask her, who will be your executor? And then she said, oh, yes, my son. And he asked another question. What, what, and what would happen if your son predeceases you? So if your son dies before you, who will then be your executor? And she got very offended, really put up. You know, she was like, God forbid, are you praying for my child to, to die? You know, and when he called me to weigh into the matter, I was trying to explain to him the cultural shock there. But to him, it was like, come on, she's got to deal with it. Death is inevitable. So you have that part where some people think uh, it, life, I mean, some people believe in the law of, of attraction. So they yeah. believe if I talk about death, then I'm attracting it. I don't want to talk about it. And sometimes it's just laced with cultural beliefs. Then there's the part which might just be that uh, people are scared of facing the reality of drafting the will, the reality of the fact that you don't have much. Because that's, that's what it will also assist you with. In the course of drafting a will, you're able to see your assets. So you might get to the point where you might be in your 60s and you're thinking, how many more years do I have to work before retirement? Are you trying to say this is all I have so far? So there are people who uh, are scared of being faced with that reality. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the thought of having to draft a will just feels uncomfortable to them they don't do it's a very uncomfortable thing very nerve-wracking to have to own up to the fact that i may not have been as disciplined as i ought to have been you know through through my working years so that's another reason some people would want to back out on drafting wills yes great so on that note what is a will and then if you can actually explain you know the various topics that you know um, I mentioned about, you know, a will, a probate, trust, and also testament. Yeah. Okay. So a, a will is just, um, it's what tells you, it tells you what will happen when you die. You have to put it straight. Now, sure. what would happen to your money, your property, your possession when you die? Uh, an S, uh, a probate, just it's just the administration of your estate so the administration of all you've acquired your possessions your money and all that now a testament it used to be the case that a will was uh, different from a testament so traditionally it used to be that wills had to deal with real estates while testaments had to deal with personal possessions like jewelry, uh clothing things like that but wills had to deal with real estate, anything land related. But right now we don't have that anymore. I mean, in the 18th, 19th century, that was the case. But currently uh, you would see that for most documents, it would say the last will and testament of this person. Okay, so that, that's about it pretty much. Great, so um, I, I, it's, it's it's a bit confusing because yes. to some people see, you know, drafting a will, you know, as, as a dangerous, you know, mindset, you know, just like you rightly said. So who should really make a will? Mm. That's a very good question. Who should be drafting a will? Yeah. And I would say anybody. Okay. Anybody. Now to everyone who's even watching this, you should have a will. <laughs> okay sometimes you see people wait until they think okay um in my 20s mid 20s i don't have much so why do i have to draft a will i'm gonna wait until probably my late 50s 60s and then i will draft something but the truth is you are you have something 
right? So you, it is just right that you put it. The way I see it is, the will helps you be disciplined. If you if you want to look at it from that point of view, so if you have a will, you're able to say because some people when they get to sixty, they're thinking, "What have I really done with all the money I worked for all these years?" There was a time my husband said to me, "Okay, we need to sit down and calculate how much has gone through our hands in our working years up until this moment." And it was so shocking to see how much we had, you know, actually touched, how much we had actually have, had to disperse. So what a will does is it just helps you be more disciplined with your with with what you have. So anyone at any age should have a will. You may not have much. Don't forget that wills are wills ought to be reviewed every five years. Mm -hmm. Okay, or if something uh, sudden or there's a major change. If uh, there's a major change, you need you ought to review the will. When I say major change, what do I mean? Uh, say uh, in the event of a separation or divorce, in the event of the birth of a child, yes, you ought to review that will. So with cases like that, you you can't just make a will and say this is it for life. So as I go through life, of course, in five years, a lot would have happened. So I can always update that will. So you should make a will if you're watching us. Great. Um, we have, especially, you know, like a lot of rich people, um, you know, like in our community, most of them die without you know, making a will and some do. Um, so what if someone dies without a will? What happens to the family? Or what happens okay. to the family that the person leaves behind? Yeah. Yes, that's, that's very sad. But the thing is, if you die without a will, then it would be considered that you have died in testing. So at that point, intestacy rules kick in, would kick in. Now, what, what, what's intestacy rules? It's just the um, closer, your closest relatives. So whoever survives you. So if you're married, it would be your, your wife, your husband or, or her, a wife. Uh, if you have children and your wife predeceased you, then it would be your children. But there are cases where they try to look for people. They like they try to look for you know next of kin. They try to look for family members of this person, and they just don't find them. So in that case, what happens? If you're in the UK, then your your estate just goes to the crown. When they say it goes to the crown, it now goes to the king. You know, uh, so it's really a sad thing, and that's why it's really important that you know you draft a will. You, the, the will gives you the opportunity to state expressly who you want to benefit from that will. There might be people who made a remarkable impact on your life at some point. Uh, probably they, they would never have known that that impact touched you so deeply. So you would think, mm, I would like to make provision for them in my will. So that's an opportunity. But if you die in test it, then they lose out, isn't it? Sure. Yes. Oh, okay. So, um, you know, um, having explained what a probate is, what are the things that are, you know, affect probate? What are the important things that really affect probate? Probate. Yeah. Okay. So, um, a, a key one is usually the issue to do with executors. So, what okay. would happen? I'll just go back a bit and then come back to that. What usually happens when you have to draft a will, like with the example I gave earlier? We would have to, the, one of the first questions we ask is who would be your executor? Now you're allowed to have at least two executors. You can go as high as four if you want to. Uh, but then the question is what happens if your executor dies? Okay, and that's why they would often encourage that you have two executors. And by the way, you know you can have professional executors as well. When we say professional executors, they could be solicitors. And you, you, you just have to pay a very insignificant fee for their service. So the, going back to will now, it's with probate. On, the, on your demise, your executor is responsible for administering your estate. So what that entails is they have to sort out your tax. They have to sort out your debts. So they look at your estate, it, whether you have a will or not. So they, they consider... Uh, how much debt you had to pay, uh, how much tax you have to pay on that estate. Now, tax is a very critical issue. If you, if you, if you permit me, I would want to talk about that as I carry on. Is that okay? Sure. Yeah. 
Sure. Okay. So now, what, what, what the issue with tax is, uh, if you have an estate larger than £325,000, what that means is that everything above £325,000 would attract a tax of 40%. Okay, I'm talking. I'm talking to those living in the UK now. So what that means is, if I have, say, an estate of five hundred thousand pounds, three hundred and twenty-five thousand would be tax-free. Anything after that would be taxed at forty percent, which is really high. So yeah. some people take steps to minimize that. We, we can talk about that later if you want us to. Uh, ways oh. people can minimize those tax, uh, the tax they pay on their estates. Uh, but now it would be the responsibility of your executor to now sort out your tax issue. They, they would have to apply for what's called the IHT uh, tax form, get obtain that form. Uh, if you do not, if you died without a will, they will be applying for, like, they'll be using letters of administration. Mm -hmm. They'll be applying for letters of administration. If you had a will, they'll be applying for grant of probate. Now that's for them to be able to have that's a, a document that shows i have the right to um, administer this this estate you know to go about the division of this estate so the problem back to your question the problem we see is often with executors so there are some executors may not be interested so at that point they have to give up their rights uh, if there are say up to four executors you the sole executor who would be acting for all of them would need to show a document confirming that they, he has a right to act on their behalf. So that's about it. So, in the um, now, now let's let's um, just take this you know um, scenario you know um, the context of our you know local culture, where most of our mothers or our parents are not well educated on some of these things and you have a lot of you know mothers and their children being driven out of the house because um sometimes the man's family will come in and say you know what uh, since your husband you know actually did not make a will we can now take possession of the house or anything that they both actually worked hard to acquire in that case what kind of rights or what kind of privileges can the woman and the children um you know have or what kind of legal action can they also take you know in hmm. trying to yeah sadly okay. some some people do not know that they have they have rights you know we see this which is very sad because the truth is if someone's died without a will yes he's died in test uh the closest family member can apply for letters of a letter of administration, okay. so in the, like the case, the scenario you just uh, painted, the wife can apply for that. I mean, we even had this case where uh, we had a client who was based here. His family was in the UA in, in United Arab uh, Emirates. When on when he died, his wife, I, 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 God knows how long it took her, but she she kept pushing and pushing until she got our contact. And asked us if we could help to write to the banks. At that point, she was giving us the power of attorney to act for her, okay. to write, to contact the banks. Because yes, you can write to as many banks as possible. There are times the spouses are not even sure what their um, what their wives or husband had, you know, while alive. Some may be able to tell you, oh, I know, I know, there was a time he mentioned HSBC, and that's about it. But we can take the pain to write to all the banks. Some will write back to tell you, unfortunately, we do not have this person on record. But for this particular person, it was so shocking to see how much a bank wrote to us to say they had on record for her husband. You know, and she was far away, many, many miles away. But if she hadn't taken that step to, you know, grant power of attorney for someone to act for her, yes, she felt, okay, I was in the country, I may not be able to, to know the steps to take. That's why you need your solicitors. Hey, contact us quickly. Wow. You know, and she took the step. And today she's 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 million pounds richer, you know. So very shocking. All she knew was he had once mentioned the bank, but the bank we even got most of the money from, she knew nothing about. 
Oh, th yeah, that's that's one of the things. So sometimes people are not aware of their rights, but these things are available. If you're the closest person, in fact, there are times where the m wife, as in this, the case you, uh, you talked about, may not be able to act. And she would say, okay, I'm giving the right to my first child, you know, to represent me and do that. Yes, you are the closest link to this person. Why not? So at what point is a whale not a whale? Sorry, I, you broke up very bit. Sorry. <laughs> at what point is a whale invalid or a whale not okay. a whale? Okay. Okay. Now, so when drafting a will, things you must be aware of, you must be 18 years and, or, and over, mm -hmm. you must be of sound mind. So sometimes you see this where uh, some children watch and they can see that their parents are becoming mentally incapacitated, uh, probably with Alzheimer's, and then they start pushing, oh, can you draft your will now? If that is later discovered, that can invalidate the will, okay? Then you must show that it was done voluntarily. Uh, you weren't cajoled, it wasn't out of duress. Like, yes, the ca good case is, is, remains this, uh, where your child compels you, you know, you've got to add my name to it. You know, because there are some parents who just feel, I, you were very bad, or you, I, I don't want you, all you do is drink and smoke and go do drugs. And I don't want you spending my money like that. So I'm not adding you to my will. So, but if the child has to force the parent to, to you know, include his or her name, then that could invalidate the will. Then very, very critically, you must sign that will before two witnesses and have those two witnesses signed before you. Now, this one is very, very important because the truth is there are three ways people could decide to draft a will. Some people could decide to just, you know, have a handwritten will, to just write it down, write their wills, but they must be signed by two witnesses in your presence and you must sign before those two witnesses. And that would be fine. There are some people decide to go online, download a template, pay a very small amount for it, and then but ensure that they are signed by two witnesses. And then uh, some people decide to contact solicitors. It is always recommended that if your case is not straightforward, you contact solicitors. Or if you have an estate of up to two million pounds, yes, you need to because the tax issue is very sensitive. Yeah. Really, really sensitive. And who knows, we might just be giving you some ideas on how to minimize the tax you pay, mm. ultimately. Okay, have you mentioned, you know, Sorry. the the, um, the kind of, uh, you know, wills that we have. Can you please um, educate us on the different types of wills that people can write? Because you said, you know, people can just, you know, no, no, no. have I a, mean, you know, unwritten one. And also maybe they can just um, download, you know, some yeah. sort of if there are any different types of wills that we have, I mean, if you can actually educate people on that. Yeah. No, what, what I meant by that is a will is a will, okay? If someone comes, picks up a paper, writes, uh, it used to be the case, you see people do that in old times, you pick up a paper, write five lines, I want this X amount to go to my daughter, put her name down, I want my property at this address to go to this. And that would be considered valid as long as it's signed by two witnesses. So a will is a will, regardless of how it's drafted, as long as it expresses the full wishes of the testator. That's what's critical. Great. Okay. Yeah. So what should one never put in a will? <laughs> you should you should put everything that is yours. Okay, but I think I, I don't know why this keeps coming to mind, and I think I might just deal with it at, at, at the same oh. time. Now, things that you must uh, be aware of now, uh, sometimes people have so much money and they feel I'm going to draft the wheel myself. But maybe if you saw your solicitor, then they would be advising you hey, you've got 500,000, a, a property worth, worth over 500,000. Have you considered this? So, some of the things we encourage you to consider is one, you could decide to gift that property to your children uh, so you can outlive seven, you can live for seven years after gifting that property. So what that means is you give the property to the child. If you live for up to seven years after, then the property is 
now now becomes theirs solely. So you on your demise, that property will not be taxed because they now own the property. But if you if if that doesn't happen, if you die, say within six to seven years of gifting that property, then they would have to pay eight percent on that property. If you die within five to six years, they pay 16%. If you die within uh, four to five years, they pay 24%. And if you die within three to, to four years of gifting that property, they pay 24%. Why would you want to let them pay anything if, if possible, as I've just said? So yeah, you we're finding a lot of people now who seek advice early, they are in their early 50s, some even in their 40s decide, okay, I, I've worked all my life for my children, so I might as well just give this property to them. So it becomes theirs before I die. Then another example is sometimes you see people give to charities. Now, this is also often taken into consideration when administering your estate. If you have been, if you have made some kind of donations to charities, Oftentimes, the would tax your estate at thirty six percent. Then we have what, something called annual exemptions. Annual exemptions allows you to uh, give three thousand pounds out every year. So you have people who decide to just you know give gift three thousand pounds every year. That's annual exemption. But then there are small gifts of two hundred and fifty pounds, 250 pounds to as many people as possible. So some people decide, I'm going to bless people. I want to see people's lives better. So I will gift them 250 pounds, as many people as possible. Uh, I, I'm just concerned about the difference it makes to their lives rather than have to pay that on inheritance tax. And then there, there, there's the one of wedding gifts okay so you can gift your child up to five thousand pounds for the wedding if it's your grandchild or great grandchild two thousand five hundred pounds even if you have given them three thousand pounds uh, annual exemption yes that's still allowed and then to any other person you can give a thousand pounds so some people feel i'm going to do this at least it's my contribution to humanity rather than have my estate tax at 40 percent so these are some things you could explore you see as uh, you when you consider when you contact your solicitor these are some ideas we could give to you so you have it now wow so um can someone you know challenge a will or a trust if if, if they feel yes um, yes of course you see this sometimes where people feel uh, something's not been right with this will uh, like the examples I gave earlier of uh, probably uh, the press, the feel the person was not mentally sound at the time the will was written. You have this sometimes for um, people who go into care homes. Sometimes they are carers or even people who have living carers. The carers sometimes could, uh, you know, raise an alarm and say, no, I saw this. I saw her child constantly come here, bully her into uh, uh, updating her will, you know, drafting a new will. And so they could do that. Sometimes you even have children. That we have a potential case like that. But in this case, I don't think there'll be any chance for them because the man's just decided my children have not lived the kind of life I wanted, I, I expected of them. So I'm not going to add them to my will. And one of the, he is very close to, you know, giving up. So one of his daughters is kicking up and really saying, I am going to challenge this. But yes, that was solely his decision. That's why I, I said she could challenge it, but her chances, the chance of her winning it would be very minimal. So there are cases where people challenge the will, of course. Why not? Yeah. Wow. So do wills, you know, necessarily um, have to be probated by the courts? Say that again, sorry. I said, do wills have to be pro uh, probated by the courts? You mean if challenged? Yeah, yeah. Of course, it has to go to due, through due process. It, it has to be investigated. If mm -hmm. and if if something is flagged up about the will, it has to be investigated. Your will must be in writing. If the person feels this re, uh, will, yes, anybody could write it for you. But if the person feels the way 
the whole process, you know, they had to go about the whole process was not really comfortable. It could, uh, they could raise that as a concern and it must be investigated. So at this point, you know, at what point does the trust, you know, come in? If, if, if um, wills are probated by the court, at what point does trust um, actually come in? It's, it's up to trust. That it, those are decisions people make. It's up to you if you decide to um, have a kind of trust for your, for whoever. Oftentimes, you know, parents would consider having trusts for their children. That's another way of also avoiding tax. Uh, so they decide, okay, I'm going to, what kind of trust are you considering? Is it basic trust? What do you want to make of it? But what we see sometimes is some parents have the desires, the, the desire to, you know, set up trusts for their children. But sometimes they're limited with the information they have. I have seen someone who wanted to set up trust for uh, his children. And then he realized that the mortgage, the property was still mortgaged. Now. Uh, you cannot be setting up trust with a mortgage property. You need to pay off. No lender would want that to happen. You're still owing the lender. So much as you desire to set up trust for your child or you put that in your will, so that could be a fundamental problem as well. So if you put that in your will and you proceed with that, maybe with uh, solicitors who have not done their due diligence, then it could be a problem that flags up later. I was talking about executors having to deal with uh, administrating, administering your, your estate. So at that point, executors would be responsible for looking. Executors are responsible for paying your tax, your IHD tax, your inheritance tax to HMRC. And then they have to deal with debts. So they could look into that issue. That's, that's, that's a mess they have to deal with there. Okay, Because now they have this uh, the lender who's come after them because this person is dead. So they also would have to sort out paying that person. So that, at that point, may, could be a problem. So trust must be entered into very carefully. Oh, why, why not? It's a, it's a decision people make. They decide what they want to do with their money. Great. So, you know, until, until recently, um, you know, there's, uh, when people actually started thinking deeply about life insurance and stuff like that. So with wills as well, we, we don't have conversations um we see you know writing a will as a dangerous thing or like um a death sentence you know like if 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 there's something like that and so how can we make people in our community um uh, be aware of the importance of writing a will what can you do you know, as solicitors what 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 can you do to um publicize this important topic yet little is known about. In answering that question, I must commend you first, Nana, for putting this together because you, you, I mean, this is courageous for you to do this. We rarely talk about it. So talks like this make people more aware. As people watch this, I'm sure there are some people who may be in their 30s, in their 40s, who would watch this and decide, hey, <laughs> we need to draft a will, you know? So it, Things like these, uh, I, I know sometimes, you, like you were saying, okay, what can solicitors do? Solicitors are there, but you will be also surprised that some people think they, they don't need solicitors. So they even want to deal with their legal problems themselves until they mess it up. There are people who do that, you know. So when people like you and I also see the need to talk about this and sensitize people around us, it is important. Uh, for those who would be watching this later, share this with people in your network. You know, so people, more people are aware of the fact that they need to have their wills drafted. I think that it starts with us, really. You know, uh, even to you and I speaking, do we have our wills drafted? And then to anyone who is watching, what steps have you taken? Because sometimes people are saying, oh, by the time I am 50, I would have had X amount of money. Yeah. And then I'll be able to draft my will. No, with the little you have, put that down and review it as you go on. Great. So where can a will be safely stored? Because you said, you know, sometimes you have parents, you know, because of their mental capacity, being coerced or being um, influenced by their you know, relatives or, you know, their children to 
write certain stuff that they, they never you know actually wanted to actually put down in their wills. So just in case in their soundness of mind where they drafted you know the will without the knowledge of any of their family members, where can they safe, safely you know store this kind okay. of document? Okay. Where? Well, that's a good question. You won't believe it. I, I know about someone who passed and her will was found uh, in between, stashed in between her mattress. Oh. You know, so you have people who do this, you know, but there are people who decide to tell their friends, close friends, to tell their family. And I think this is something I also needed to mention. Uh, you, you, you can't just get somebody appoint. You, you must appoint an executor for your will. Mm -hmm. You can't appoint an executor without, without having informed them. Otherwise, can you imagine that you're dead and they go to the executor to, to, to say, okay, it's time to draft the, to, to uh, administer the estate. And the executor is staring like, what, what are you talking about? Because you should also inform the executor where you have left the will. Then there is the register for that, you know, with Newcastle. People could decide to do that. You pay a fee for that. But some people find that it's the safest way to have their wills safe. Some give it to their solicitors, but ultimately your solicitor, to make it safe for themselves, will put it on that register, really. So that's, that's one good option I think people can go for. But for, some people decide to tell their friends, very close friends or family member, this is where I have my will in case I'm, no, um, I, I'm nowhere to be found tomorrow. That's where you should go for it. Yeah. Right. Um, I think I've got a friend sending in a question, so I'll just try to read it. Um, this is from Bukola saying, is there an appropriate age for drafting a will? Does someone who doesn't have children need a will? Of course, we all need, we all need wills. We all do. Like I was saying earlier, um, even if you're in your 20s, <laughs> you've got money going through your hands. Why not? So as long as you are 18 and over, mm -hmm. I, I, I mentioned that's what makes your will valid. Uh, for, for your will to be considered valid, you must be 18 years and over. Okay? And then you don't have to wait for any time. Because like I was saying, uh, if, a child, if someone is, say, 21 and has started working and is earning and decides to draft his or her will, that's even better. Because that makes this person even more disciplined. You get to the point where you're saying to yourself, oh, I, I will give X amount of money to, even if it's to mom or dad or my sibling, uh, that's something. So if by the time, I said, wills have to be reviewed every five years. By the time this person is 26 and the person is going through it and the person realizes, okay, I need to add something to this will. Maybe the person has since, um, maybe is on, his or her way to getting married, you know, and thinks, okay, that's a major change. I also need to, you know, tweak the wheel. If the person gets to that point and looks at it and thinks, oh, five years ago, I could gift, I could, I was in a position where I wanted to gift X person 20,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. And since then, I don't even have up to 20,000 pounds. So that makes this person even more disciplined. So you're looking at it and thinking, what have I done with all, the, all of that money? So really critical. Anyone 18 years and over should have a will. Great. So um, I hope, Bukula, I hope that uh, answers your question. And um, how do you prove someone's mental capacity? Um, you know, at the time of writing a will, how do you know that the person capacity? had mental capacity? Yes. Okay. There, there are different ways. I mean. Um, when it's checked, even if it's the early stages, there are people who, when they feel, okay, they now they're now in the early stage of Alzheimer's, they feel, okay, I need to draft this will before I become so forgetful. Yeah. Uh, loving children of such persons would want to help the person sit down and put something in writing when the person is in a good state. You know, they, at that point, in the early stages, they're in and out. So you know when this person is with it. So that's that's the time you you want this person to draft to to get something down. Uh, but when it's the case where, like the example I gave earlier about the carer reporting that uh, uh, one of the children uh, 
puts his or her parents, his mom on the duress, you know. So it's, it, it's obvious when, I mean, if the person has gone for a lot of medical assessments, you know, at that point where it's beginning to look like, oh, she's becoming forgetful, he's, he's beginning to mix things up, mix events up. You know, so it's 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 obvious, and they could they could also check with the medical report of this person, mm -hmm. so they know when things really go worse. And in the course of investigation, they might also get doctor uh, the opinion of doctors as well, because especially this person personal doctor who's been treating the person. So the doctor will be able to tell if at the time, as at this date, this yeah. person was still meant as compass. You know, so that's that's one of it. Great. So can I use my will to disinherit someone? Can someone use their will to disinherit someone? Okay. What it is, is don't, don't forget you, what's your will. Your will is about your money, your property, your possessions. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got nothing to do with, um, I, I don't want to say ownership, like you own the person mm -hmm. or, you know, such links. But you could you you could decide to delist someone from your will. That's one thing you could do. If you don't mention, then that's one of the advantages. You know when we're talking about dying intestate. Yeah. If you don't mention this person or your will, they cannot be considered, and that's why it's a problem sometimes. I was so shocked the other day. I was listening to Dave Ramsey, and he was speaking, and he said uh, he even believes that. Uh, people should read the wills before they die. There should be will reading before they die. <laughs> and while I was discussing that with my husband, I was really like, this man is something else, you know. He said for him, he's done that with his children. Everyone knows what they will get when he's gone. Mm -hmm. And that he he thinks that's better than uh, them expecting a lottery, uh, you know, to think that they won the lottery when he dies. And then they're shocked to find out that their names are not even on the will. So if you do, if you think, oh no, this child is going to mismanage this money anyway. All he does is abuse on drugs, on substances. I'm not going to give him anything. You don't mention, if it's not mentioned, sorry, he might be present for the reading of the will, but unfortunately he can only throw up and cause problem for the others. And that's the kind of problem you don't want. I guess that's the kind of problem Dave Ramsey was talking yeah. about when he said you need to avoid that. So the child knows you're not getting anything because of these behaviors. Great. So, you know, when people have, you know, pre pre nuptials or you know, um, so it's like they they go into that marriage knowing what, you know, um I've already willed. So, okay, um when they both acquire things together, I mean at the time that they actually go together, but then they have this pre nuptial such as a sign before they actually um um go married. In that case, when they when one party actually dies, what happens to um, the other party? Okay, you're talking about Pino. Yeah. Uh, now, before I answer that question, I'm hoping I understand the question. But before I come back, come back to it. For you, you know, when I was talking about your will, I said one of the major incidents, events mm -hmm. that may take place that should warrant the will being reviewed is the case of divorce, and then the case of one party dying you must because usually typically what you find in will is the first the first line is often i leave everything to my surviving spouse mm -hmm. right and the name so what happens when this wife or husband dies so you need to review that will to reflect that event okay but talking about prenups one thing people don't re realize with prenups is that prenups must be reviewed as well they must be reviewed. So, and this is where they lose their authenticity in courts. A lot of judges throw them out if they've not been reviewed. You can't because you signed a prenup before you uh, you decided to marry 20 years ago, think that you can, at the death of your spouse, just bring it up and say, oh yes, there we go. No. So that argument has to be altered. So in, things happen. But once a, a spouse dies, really, even when you have a will, you need to review that will. Have I answered the question? If not, no, um, sure, sure. ask sure, the question because, again. No, 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 no. Because I am thinking, you know, the situation where let's say you go into a marriage, but then you've got your children already. So it's like you, you, let's say this being your, 
I wouldn't say first marriage or second marriage because sometimes people have children out of wedlock, but then they, they sign this prenuptial thing. In that case, what happens to the children? And you, uh, so that's a scenario that I'm just trying to actually, um, you know, raise or, or create. So in that case, what happens to the children? What happens to, to the lady that um, this man, you know, eventually marries? Okay, so let me give an example, and I hope that clarifies what you have in mind. If not, you can ask the question again. So there's the case of a woman who, uh, her husband, on his deathbed, re pleaded with her and said to her, I know you will be, you're a very beautiful woman, you're attractive, and I don't want to restrict you. So I know you will move on to marry somebody else, but I want my children protected i want oh he he was a very wealthy man so he didn't want the case where she moves into another family becomes a blended family and then everything is lost in there because don't forget this is where we sometimes have a problem if you're coming from your previous marriage with all of that wealth yeah. and you bring them into your marriage and it's not decided at the start what is what who, what is for who and you know boundaries are not drawn around yeah. that money yeah. once they're pulled together they become matrimonial assets oh. matrimonial assets have to be considered in the matrimonial pots and you know when the assets have to be divided so even if you brought them from your previous marriage if they were not separated then but you know when people talk about pinup i like to always say pinup is a vehicle there are a lot of vehicles so for a woman like that, rather than sign a prenup with her new husband to protect her children, she could decide to put that money in trust for them, you see. Okay. okay. Wow. Um, you know, viewers out there, this is an important discussion. And trust me, um, I would just age each and everyone listening to us to share. Have I answered your question, though? Yes, 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 you have. Yeah. We have and please share this important discussion because we want um, our community to be educated and also to be informed about some of these um, topics that we find that you know as a taboo you know to to openly um, talk in our homes so please share this discussion and let this go far at least you can listen to this and maybe educate maybe your your parents on them, if if they are not that educated, yes, maybe as yes, you can help them, you know, on that. And also maybe to the young ones. Um, you also don't wait to get too old to start, you know, drafting your will. Just like you know, Chidi said, you can even start drafting your will at the age of 25, 30, yes. So please let us all be educated on this. Um, so you know, Chidi do someone necessarily needs a lawyer to write up a will you know i was saying earlier um yeah. you could some people decide to have a handwritten will some people okay. decide to download a template online uh, but it becomes very important for you to have a lawyer if your case is not straightforward okay like the case you talked about which involves like a blended family you need to be speaking with a lawyer okay. right if you have I know that they would often say that's that's what they use for discretion. If you have an estate of up to two million pounds, you should be speaking with the lawyer. So I think really, if you get to that point where your estate were, uh, would attract inheritance tax, you need to speak with the lawyer. There are pointers they will give to you, like I shared earlier, that will help yeah. you save a lot on on tax. So why not speak to a lawyer today? Great, because um, I had to just remind. Um viewers who just joined in just in case uh, maybe they miss out on the beginning um and i i i also asked because sometimes we get frightened you know by the legal fees and stuff like that so um <laughs> and you know truly it it doesn't it doesn't cost much really so how much does it cost then you know to no to it, it the law, they are different lawyers okay and they okay. charge differently but it, it shouldn't cost much. And if you think about it, uh, think about the safety of what you're doing, as opposed to paying just a few pennies to a lawyer. I would call, I'll call it a few pennies. You know? 
So why not? You need that peace of mind to know I've done it right and it's, it cannot be invalidated. Great, great. So what should someone bring um, to, you know, to the initial, uh, for the initial consultation, what are some of the things that people can bring if they want to actually write a, a will? Okay, so the first thing we'll be asking you is who will be your executors, okay? okay. Uh, so you need to think about that. If, like the example I gave earlier of the woman with one child, what happens if that child reduces you, if that child dies before you? So who would you want to be? We recommend at least two executors. You can have as many as four executors. So you need to think about that. Your executors can benefit from your will, yes. Executors could be your, uh, your close friends or relative. It's up to you who you want. Or you can go for professional executors like solicitors. Mm -hmm. um, so you think about that. Then you think about who will be the beneficiaries yeah. Who do you want to benefit from your assets as you have all of these assets? And what do you want each beneficiary to, to, take, to take? Then who will be your witnesses? Your witnesses cannot benefit from your will. So you cannot be mentioning them as uh, beneficiaries at all. No, they don't stand to get anything. Executors can, your uh, witnesses cannot. There's another issue I think has just come to mind, I must mention. And that's the issue of guardianship, right? Because if you have the, if you have your children, for you have people who are very poorly, they're ill, and they are maybe um, going towards their end of life, and they have very young children. So mm -hmm. that, this becomes very paramount. In whose care do you want to leave your children? You want to think about that. Uh, so if it's a case where you have two parents who have split up, they're no longer together. Yeah. Uh, one may want to, father may want to appoint a guardian he trusts. Okay, and mom may want to appoint a guardian she trusts. So in that case, it's okay. We can have two guardians. Well, who are guardians? They uh, are people who make decisions for your child. So what you'll be doing by appointing them as guardians is bequeathing parental responsibility to them. So if I'm not here, you can make as you can make just as any decision as I would for this child, even major decisions. Okay, so they take on, and this is very sensitive, and that's why you must think carefully who you want to appoint as a guardian. So, in a case where you're not together, both parties could decide to appoint their own guardians to ensure the safety of the child, the well being of the child. Great. So, um, is there any area? Um, of our discussion that maybe I wasn't able to talk about because this is your field and <laughs> that maybe you want the public to know about in terms of wills, mm -hmm. trust and testament yeah before we end tonight's discussion and also an opportunity um, to leave your number and also talk about your um, your company I mean if anyone actually wants to contact you for any issues at all yeah so if you can take it Okay, uh, no, no, nothing really is coming to mind, but really, I, I would like to say thank you, Nana, for putting this together. And I hope our viewers will share this with as many people as need the information. Uh, we all need to start thinking about our wills. Let's not wait until we're close to retirement. You know, uh, do it, do it, just do it today. And sometimes, you know, you, 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 we keep procrastinating. You're thinking, oh, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. And I'll do it. And then the years just keep going by. Just get on and do it and ensure that you review it as you go on. I can be contacted through LinkedIn. I'm on, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Twitter. You can send me a DM. Uh, I, I could leave my email, uh, chidi at elketersandassociates.com. Mm -hmm. Feel free to... Uh, contact me whichever wherever you find me I mean I will pick it up and um, I sure will respond great um, to our lovely family out there watching us if anyone has got any legal issues any immigration issues I mean any family issues any issues at all that you want lawyer Chidi Akuna to help you with please don't hesitate to um, contact her on LinkedIn and also you can look for her firm. Um, it's called Elkitters and Associates. Uh, 
solicitors and um, Chidi Akuna. Yes, we'll, we'll be more than happy to help you. And so uh, I just want to read a few comments from, you, you know, people who just joined in. I've got Foundation for Family Affairs saying great session. Thank you so much. And I have Sage A also saying beautiful. And I've got Bukola um, also saying great info. Thank you so much. And um, I've got Relationship Builders Forum says it's very useful information. Thank you for sharing this information. And I've got um, Relationship Builder Forum also saying amazing. And I've got um, a few others. Oh, I think we, Bukala, okay, says, thinking about the person who had their will under their mattress, who needs to know you have drafted your will <laughs> and where okay. it is. Yeah, I think, I think maybe, I don't know whether maybe it's a question, but it says, thinking about the person mm -hmm. who had their will under their mattress, who needs to know you have drafted your will and where it is? Yes, you, uh, you could tell your friends or family about it, or the safest place is just put it on the register. Mm. Yes. Great. Um, if I can have the next... Okay, I've got my own brother also from from Palm TV UK says, saying educated programme. Thank you so much, Pastor um, August Nabwaji. Thank you so much for your support. Yes, so on that note... And, oh, sorry. Um, yes, another one from Thelma saying... I would have to rewatch the session. I missed quite a lot of information. Yes. Thelma, please do take some time up, out and watch this uh, session. And trust me, you come back and thank Chidi Akuna. And I've got Maverick saying this the this demystified wills. Thank you. Yes. I think I think majority of us are scared of wills majority of us because we see it as something too dangerous something that we are not too brave to sit down and you know like um like just like you said it's a huge reflection and it's a bit never racking and I, I think you know like most of us we don't want to sit back and you know go through that mental touch up so thank you for demystifying wills for us tonight so once again, thank you so much for educating us. Thank you. I'm so grateful, honestly, from my heart. So grateful Aww. to you. Thank it's you, Nana. Great. Thank you to everyone. I saw some of my lovely people there. Thank you so much. You. You. I know you are so busy. And mom and wife, um, a full-time you know, solicitor. And yet, you're so humble. And thank you so Aww. much. Thank you. And I know if I come knocking on your door once again, you come back and educate the Inside View family. So once again, thank you and happy new month. Thank you for having me. Yes. So to anyone that joined in, uh, 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 that's joining, I say thank you for your company once again and take care. Good night. Bye-bye.